Hello, sir. Are we live for this book? All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you uh, for joining us this afternoon as I update the community uh, on the two Bunnell uh, homicides. Uh, as you know, I'm Sheriff Rick Staley, and joining me today is State Attorney R.J. Larizzo, Bunnell Police Chief David Brannon, and members of the Sheriff's Major Case Unit, and family uh, members of Noah Smith and Marion Hall. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. For those that are on Facebook, thank you for joining as we provide an update on the homicide investigations of Noah Smith and Camarion Hall that occurred in South Bunnell. This is going to be a little long uh, because this is a very intricate case, and I'm going to ask to explain it to you uh, for all the, the moving uh, parts. As of today, we have arrested three of four individuals in the murders of the two 16-year-old victims. The subjects in custody are 20-year-old Tyrese Patterson, 23-year-old Stephen Monroe, and 18-year-old Devondre Williams. We are searching for 18-year-old Terrell Sampson, who's being charged with attempted second-degree murder in the homicide of Noah Smith. In the addition to the murder charges and Noah's death, Devondre Williams is facing charges of second-degree murder and attempted second-degree murder with a firearm for the homicide of Camarion. Uh, during this investigation, we made other arrests for various felony offenses. While they were not involved in the that has been occurring in South Bunnell and in parts of Palm Coast. In total, we have made nine arrests and we are searching for the tenth person. So let me, um, well, before I explain the investigation, um, I want to emphasize the magnitude of this investigation. Detectives not only had to find the evidence but work through multiple stories that didn't match members of the community preferred to take street jobs into their own hands instead of assisting law enforcement. Multiple incidents were linked involving a handful of criminal thugs ranging in age from 14 to 28. Due to the complexity of this investigation, it's very challenging to outline so that you can understand all the subjects, suspects, and events that occurred that led up to the two murders. But I'm going to do my best, and then I have all the experts that investigated this case behind me if I can't get questions. Uh, what, what we believe was a beef between two groups of one bad asset were the events that led up to the homicide. Starting in mid September last year, Jeeva at a vehicle operated by Devondre Williams. In late December, Josiah Femster and Jeeva Johnson were in the vehicle of an unoccupied co-conspirator, I'm sorry, an unindicted co-conspirator, and were seen shooting each other just before Jeeva pulled a firearm on members of the GSO. In GSO, a wannabe gang known as Get Stepped On out of Palm Coast. In early January 2020, Stephen Monroe and other members of GSO made a YouTube video pointing guns at kids. And a few days later, Tyrese Patterson reported he and his mother were victims of an attempted armed robbery and carjacking involving Edward Sampson of the Bunnell side of the two groups. Two days later, on January 12th, Edward told law enforcement he was robbed at gunpoint outside the Carver gym by members of GSO, which made an Instagram live video holding guns and taunting Edward Sampson for running from them. Also on January 12th, members of the Bunnell side, including Terrell Sampson, along with Noah Smith, standing outside on South Anderson Street, when a vehicle operated by members of GSO started taunting them, 
circling and opening fire uh, with Ter Terrell Simpson as the intended target. Sadly, this is when Noah Smith was struck fatally and died. According to witnesses, the occupants of the suspect vehicle were playing a rapper Kodak Black song, Super Gremlin. The song states the subject of the song will be killed in front of witnesses. This investigation on this homicide was started by the Bunnell Police Department and turned over to the Flagler County Sheriff's Office Major Case Unit for investigation. In April, Stephen Monroe of GSO released a song on Apple Music called OK in reference to Bunnell side, specifically attacking Jeeva Johnson in the rap song. The lyrics reference the shooting of Noah Smith in which he states, and I quote, I could be smoking on Terrell, but that boy be taking flight, end quote. Terrell Sampson was the intended target of the shooting. In the rap of world, in case you don't know, smoking, and that's S-M-O-K-I-N, on someone means that someone has been murdered, specifically by the person making the statement or their associates. Then two weeks later, on May 3rd, an unindicted co-conspirator drove Stephen Monroe and Devontree Williams of GSO to East Bowie Street and South Pine Street, where they opened fire, striking Kimarian Hall, who died from his injuries. Again, Camarion was not the intended target. The intended target was Terrell Sampson. Since the Sheriff's Office had been contracted to investigate and handle all major cases for the City of Bunnell, our major case unit handled this investigation from the start. Throughout the investigation, our major case unit detectives reviewed multiple social media profiles in various social media interactions, messages, comments, aggressive music content and pictures to piece together the involvement of all four main murder suspects. This helped us prove premeditation. During this investigation, it was discovered that there were two opposing sides to local violence, including the Bunnell side and the Palm Coast side. These two sides chose street justice to resolve their dispute instead of calling or cooperating with law enforcement, which delayed detectives in gathering the evidence needed to make arrests in all of these cases. In some cases, drive-by shootings went unreported so these two groups could pursue their own street justice. The beef resulting in street justice between Bunnell and Palm Coast groups included taunting each other through social media, creating rap songs, as I've mentioned, about each other and specific details that happened during these violent street justice incidents that led up to the murders. We also discovered multiple pictures of suspects posing with firearms and threatening each other group. This was like a modern-day Hatfield and McCoy between these two factions of thugs. Unit spent 2,500 hours, actually more than that, working these two cases. Now think about that for a minute. A full-time detective works 2,080 hours a year. So that's the equivalent of more than one year of a full-time detective focused solely on these cases. We also served 40 search warrants, conducted 80 interviews, issued 70 preservation requests to social media and cell phone providers and served 12 investigative subpoenas. You can see this was an exhaustive investigation, but I had no doubt in the team behind me and many that you don't see that our team would solve these murders. So I hope these offenders get the maximum uh, Mr. Prosecutor, the case not to put you on the spot, but we work close with you, and now you have to prosecute him. I, I want to emphasize again, the victims of the homicides were good victims. They were innocent victims. They were not the intended targets of the drive-by shootings. Terrell Sampson 
for the Detroit. Solving these cases was a team effort between the State Attorney's Office, Homicide Investigation Unit, Volusia County Sheriff's Office, DF, Probation and Parole, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, Bonnell Police Department, FWC, Jacksonville Sheriff's Office Gang Unit, and Daytona Beach Police Department. You can see we left no, no stone unturned and we used a lot of partners to solve these cases. In our agency, the lead detectives were Master Detective Barkowski on Kimarian Hall case, and Detective First Class Daryl Butler for Noah Smith, under the leadership of Sergeant Aristocopoulos. But the entire team investigated. They were just the lead detectives. It involved almost every component an employee in this agency, whether that was in our communication center from taking 911 calls to CSI, to patrol, to the PACE unit, to our real-time crime, with every detective in major case and many others. I could not be more proud of the dedication and the team uh, that you see behind me. It included endless hours of work, but they were determined to solve these dynamic and complicated cases. So aside from the suspects in both homicide investigations, there were additional co-conspirators involved, most of whom are all residing in the Green Roof Inn, as I like to call it, of the Sheriff Perry Hall Inmate Detention Facility. Linked to some of these crimes and the suspects involved in both homicides, we made multiple other arrests during the investigation. As I mentioned, all are loosely related to the murder investigation and are in custody on various drug charges, weapon, or violent related felony offenses, or probation violations. The additional subjects during this arrest that have been arrested, or, 19, or during this investigation have been arrested are 19 year old Jeeva Johnson, arrested for domestic battery, resisting arrest, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon tampering with evidence, improper exhibition of a weapon, possession of a weapon, or ammo by a convicted felon, and felony violation of a no-contact order. We also arrested 28-year-old Edward Sampson, arrested for violation of probation for drug possession, petty theft, battery of a detained person for a fight he had in the jail after being arrested. 19-year-old Kashawn Davis was arrested for robbery with a weapon, 20-year-old Josiah Femester, arrested for robbery with a firearm. And 20-year-old Roderick Williams, arrested for felony possession of marijuana, violation of probation, battery of a detained person in possession of cannabis with intent to sell. All of them are being held at the Sheriff Perry Hall inmate detention facility. Additionally, we arrested a 14-year-old Lawrence Fulmar, was arrested to the Florida Department of Juvenile Justice uh, earlier this month for robbery with a weapon. All of these people are involved in these two warring groups. There, <coughs> excuse me. There are other subjects linked to these two groups in the homicides that we know were involved, and if we can get them, we will, as this investigation continues. But I'm proud to say that thanks to the dedication of the team behind me and the hard work of the Sheriff's Office and our partners, nine out of these ten violent offenders have been arrested and behind bars where they belong, and we will get the tenth one. All four subjects charged with murder have lengthy criminal histories for crimes that include aggravated assault, deadly weapons, resisting with violence, uh, battery, unlawful possession of firearms, possession of narcotics, and uh, with intent to sell, grand theft, and robbery. And that's just to name some of their charges. Uh, these were difficult cases. Uh, based on the intertwining of the suspects, the relatives, the friends, and wanting to settle disputes with street justice. I'm very proud of everyone that worked on these cases to find justice for Noah and Kerryman. Keeman, Keemarian, rather, I apologize, for their families. And I hope today, knowing that people are being held accountable for the murder of your brothers, sisters, and children, brings you some justice. 
I have a message to Terrell Sampson. Turn yourself in now. You are safer facing your charges than being on the street looking over your back all the time wondering when the other group's going to get you because that's what killed two beautiful young kids in our county. We will not stop until we arrest you, and I promise you, you will get caught. So it's safer for you to call us, turn yourself in. We have people searching for you right now. Um, I would like to now turn it over to our state attorney, R.J. Larizzo, for any comments that he may wish. Last time I addressed the press regarding this case, we were outside and we were unveiling a billboard, which by my pass on US-1 to see that billboard, it just, it hits me in the gut of my stomach. Today we made some progress, arrested three or four, uh, about to get the fourth person and charging them with murder. Uh, in, involving uh, the first incident, we're talking about first degree murder charges. The second incident, second degree murder charges. Uh, plus attempted second degree murder charges. Uh, Sampson is being charged uh, based on his shooting at the vehicle that was uh, housing some of the individuals from the Palm Coast group. One thing that's very disturbing to me, you've heard the sheriff talk about the records of these folks, but you've also heard about him talking about the ages. First off, our victims, 16 years old, 16 years old. One individual who's charged in two, uh, charged with murder in both of these uh, shootings, uh, Devontae Williams was 17 at the time. 17, just turned 18 years old, and he's sitting in jail with several counts of murder. I can't say enough about the sheriff's office working through the complexities of this case. This is a new era of an era of investigation. Social media has got a grip on our, our young folks today. They use it as, I hate to use the word because it's politicized so much, but they have, social media is being weaponized by these groups of young kids who I don't think understand or appreciate just what they are doing to the, their communities, their communities. It's ripping these communities apart. We have families in here crying. We've got families that aren't going to have their family members anymore. And over what, a beef about disrespect? Or about who's tougher? I'm, we're talking music videos. We're talking staged, staged activities on social media that are glorifying violence and death. That's what we're seeing. So God bless the sheriff's office for their hard work. And we're proud that we were able to be a part of that. And it's not over, folks. These kind of cases are complex, and it's going to take a lot of effort and time to put them together for trial. But we will. We will because justice, which equals accountability, demands that we put our best efforts forward. And finally, all I'd like to say is to the communities, Vanell, Palm Coast, I mean, I could go on and on, Daytona Beach, Spring Hill, a, a lot of other communities within the Seventh Circuit that are suffering from their children being killed and children killing their children. Help us to put an end to this. Help us to prevent this from happening in the future. That is, that is my sincere wish and hope. And again, Sheriff, I can't say enough about your group and how well, that, how hard they worked. To, to bring this to the to the point that we're at now. So thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak. I'd like to uh, 
ask uh, the Bunnell Police Chief, uh, David Rannon, if he would like to say anything. Thank you, Sheriff. On behalf of the mayor, city commissioners, residents, and members of the police department in the city of Bunnell, I'd just like to extend our thanks and appreciation to Sheriff Staley and to your team here that relentlessly pursued this case from day one. They invested everything they had to bringing justice for the families of these victims. And I just want to reassure anybody out there who has any idea that they're going to continue this type of behavior, if you can't tell, we're, we're not going to give up. We're coming after you, and we're going to make Flagler County as we possibly can, every square inch of Flagler County. So take your business somewhere else and stay out of Bunnell and Flagler County and these other areas. Thank you. Uh, Sergeant uh, Aristocopoulos uh, leads our major case unit. Uh, would you like to add anything? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, the first thing that I want to say, um, I wanted to thank um, especially the fathers of these two young men, Keon, Keith. Um, thank you for having faith in the sheriff's office and to our major case unit and giving us time to do what we do to bring justice to Camarion and Noah. Uh, Keith, we, uh, we, we've all had many conversations since January when Noah was senselessly gunned down. And thank you from the bottom of my heart from giving us the opportunity and from trusting us uh, to bring justice for your son. Keon, the same goes. I, I appreciate it to you and your family for, for, for being patient because I know that as a father, as a family member to these two young men who didn't deserve to die, it cannot be an easy thing for you all to do. And thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to Detective Butler, the lead detective on the Noah Smith case. He's on vacation today, but he's standing right behind us. He, he gave up his vacation to come in and see this through. Detective Barkowski, the same thing. He's put in so many hours. Investigator Quinteri with the, the state attorney's office helping us. Everybody behind me uh, that has worked on these cases. Um, I, I have never been more humbled to be a part of a group like this. And hopefully to everybody watching out there, we are not going to give up. The sheriff does not accept anything less than success from us, and we don't expect, accept anything less from ourselves. So we're going to continue, and even if a homicide happened six months ago, years ago, we're going to keep fighting, and we're going to use every single resource to bring justice to these young men and women who lose their lives. Thank you, Sheriff. I would... Uh like to give the family an opportunity if you would like to say anything you're welcome to that you don't feel like you have to it's totally uh, up to you the hall or the smith family okay please come on come on up Keith Smith, I know a dad, and I want to come up here and thank these guys too for helping us out and getting us through it. It's a little piece we don't get through it, but that's all I really got to say. I want to thank y'all. So as you can see during um, this investigation, a lot of uh, a lot of work went into it. Yes, sir. Thank you to the whole sheriff's department. We lost Kimarion. But the guy's angels is all over him right now. But it don't make sense for just young people killing each other. We got to get our kids back in church or somewhere or some kind of program. Just tear Flagler County apart. We need all y'all help. You help anybody that want to help us. Thank you. So I just thought I'd show you some uh, some photos of uh, uh, some of the suspects and their antics uh, taunting uh, each other uh, that they did on social media. 
So this is Patterson and Williams with their their guns and team making their videos. This is Williams and Patterson again. Of course, we thank them for doing this. It helps us make a good case for premeditated murder. Um, you know, this is Devondre Williams. You know, just just want to be badasses. Want to be want to be thugs is what they want to be. Devondre Williams again. You know, it just tears the community apart. It certainly tears families apart. Stupid. Tyrese Patterson. Another one, Tyrese Patterson with his guns. Stephen Monroe. Or Stephen Monroe. And it just goes uh, on and on, uh, but I think you get the point. Stephen Monroe again. Uh, the Palm Coast group, the wannabe uh, gang member, GSO, thank you for tattooing yourself up so we know who you who and where you belong and what you're trying to do. Not going to be hard to get rid of that tattoo. That will follow you for life, so we, we appreciate that. All of these suspects had extensive criminal histories. Uh, the one that we're looking for uh, right now, Terrell Sampson, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without intent to kill, simple assault, resisting without violence, multiple arrests for that, simple battery, principle of criminal mischief, battery by strangulation, domestic violence, and the list just goes on and on. Uh, our public affairs officer uh, can, can give you the history if you want, but I think you get the point. It's pages and pages in pages. These are not first time offenders. And uh, hopefully they will go away for a very long time and go to state prison uh, where they can't hurt anybody else again. And uh, so with that, I'll be glad to uh, take any questions. I do see uh, Crime Stoppers uh, represented back there in the back, Ed Fuller. I would like to thank Crime Stoppers. Uh, after we put the billboard up, uh, my detectives tell me we did get uh, some uh, some information from that, so, so thank you for that partnership uh, there. And yeah, did you officially start the feud between the two groups that led to those shootings in September? So, there is speculation on the street that there was a drive-by shooting actually in the city of Daytona Beach. Yeah, sorry. I always tell my staff to turn them off and I forgot mine. A drive-by shooting that was unreported in Bunnell, and that started the feud uh, a couple couple years ago, right? And uh, and it just continued taunting each other. Uh, obviously, you know, there's always drugs involved in this. There's always guns involved in this kind of activity. Uh, but you can see from the two posters over here, you know, we have linkage to Daytona, to Palm Coast, and to Bunnell. You see the different incidents that have occurred. And then obviously the the uh, suspects investigation, but you know it's it's some stupid taunting which uh, today environment with the youth seems to be that's what they do. And you know years ago people would if you were being bullied or something like that you would solve it with you know maybe a, a physical fight, right? Now they pull guns. Well, yeah. you made mention of. Street justice. Uh, did, the, did the street justice uh, somehow maybe delay the solving of the crime for you? And can you maybe give us a little more detail? What type of street justice are we talking about here? Well, the street justice was trying to kill Terrell Sampson and resulted in two unintended victims uh, because of uh, the tauntings and the threats that were occurring. Uh, it made it more difficult to uh, solve because certain factions of the community did not want to come forward and give us information that they had or would give us information trying to lead us down the wrong path. And so the detectives had to work through all of that. Uh, but there was also parts of the community that, that came forward too, and we appreciate that as I, as I mentioned through Crime Stoppers. Uh, but I, I think, I think 
it could have been solved quicker if we'd have had uh, information that ultimately we developed. Uh, uh, are those factions of the community that try to lead you away from solving this case, uh, any of them being arrested or being charged with anything so far? Well, there's a number of people that got arrested for different charges, and their bonds were very high. So if you read between the lines and know how the criminal justice system works, uh, we might not have got them for the murders, but we got them for other stuff. And they will be prosecuted and have to pay uh, their penalty for that. So, Sheriff, this process that has been the target for both of these, at least he was the intended target, he's the one that's still wanted. Are you worried at all that there's still this outlying danger within the community? <coughs> well, I don't think the community is at danger. I think Terrell Sampson's at danger, uh, in danger. And that's why I suggest he turn himself in, because he needs to come to us before the other group finds him, because I can't control that. Uh, I can't control what our deputies do when we apprehend them, and he's safer in our jail than being on the streets. But that's his choice. He's going to get arrested. The question is, is he going to get killed somewhere else first? Well, I think we've taken a huge, huge dent out of the issues in South Pinnell. But keep in mind, there's a piece in Palm Coast in this case, too. So it's not just South Pinnell. But I knew, know that, uh, you know, there's a new police chief in Pinnell. He's got uh, a different vision. He's rebuilding his police department. Uh, chief, I don't know if you'd like to add anything to that. You're welcome. Since I arrived in late February, um, working with Sheriff Staley and his staff, you know, we've taken a new approach to how we both do community policing and enforcement, not just in South Pinnell, but throughout all of Pinnell. Uh, being more proactive uh, through traffic enforcement, citizen contacts, and letting the bad guys know that we're out here and we're going to be checking you. So, uh, you know, we're greatly increasing the chances of getting caught and getting arrested. Um, and hopefully that's going to deter them and force them to go somewhere else. Um, but I'm very happy with the, the uh, reaction of our officers. They're, they're uh, out here working every day trying to make a difference. And uh, the partnership with the sheriff and his staff has been tremendous. Um, not just on the investigative side, but in uniform patrol. His deputies and our officers are working side by side, as I said earlier, to try to make not just Bunnell, but all of Flagler County, the safest place in Florida. Can, can we talk about the Citizens Unite Citizen Day um, that your department put on, is putting on? Go ahead, Chief. I hate to come in and go Yes, ma'am. Well, today is a form of a cleanup in and of itself, and I uh, can't thank uh, the Sheriff again and his staff for what they've done. We're doing a community policing effort on Saturday, June 18th, from 8 a.m. to noon at the Carver Gym where we're going to be going through South Bunnell and, and showing the, the residents there, the good guys, if you will, that we care about them, we care about their community, and we're going to help them do what we can to physically clean up that neighborhood as, but as much as possible. Let, let me just add something that I hope gives uh, the Noah Smith family some uh, solace uh, in this. There is something good that came out of, of Noah's death. And that is the city of Bunnell is now contracting uh, with the sheriff's office for, to handle all major cases. They didn't have the capability to do that. They realized it after the death of Noah. And some of these cases predate uh, the death of Noah. And quite frankly, I think had they been actively pursued, only God knows what the outcome would have been, but this fester uh, in uh, specifically South Bunnell, but also Palm Coast and obviously Daytona, uh, because there was no uh, reactive uh, policing. I'm not, Chief, I'm not trying to, you weren't here. You know, it's a, it's a different era uh, right now in Bunnell. Um, and the vision is different. But they didn't have the resources, they didn't have the capability uh, to investigate some of what was occurring. 
in uh, South Pinal. And I think that that led to a passion that people like this that's on this board can do whatever they want. And they found out they can't. Sheriff, I'm just standing here and now for my clarification purposes. Those two young men died because they were trying to kill Sheriff Thompson, right? So, in any way connected to the group that Sheriff Thompson belonged to? No, they they were um, they were probably curious in one case on what was going on and was outside, and in the other case, um, uh, well, both cases in the wrong place at the wrong time is really what it was. These are good kids. That's why I want to emphasize there's no connection to either one of these kids that we have been able to find out to any one of these groups. That, um, that, that's what I'm asking. I, I, I just I wanted to make sure that, that was clear. That's correct. Sheriff, have you always been able to bring these charges about these kids when you were to solve uh, the police online? Um, I'll, I'll let either the state attorney or uh, Sergeant Harris to Campbell has answered that. I, I, I have an opinion on that, uh, but uh, maybe George, do you want to sure. answer that? The, the investigation, we let it take us wherever it takes us. It's our ultimate goal here, today is a great step towards getting justice for Camilla and Noah, but we still haven't convicted them. That's for uh, Mr. Larissa and his team to convict them. And every piece of that evidence goes closer towards a conviction. We don't want to have a situation where we've got a case that we might win in trial. We want a case that's an absolute slam dunk. We'd like to spare these families from having to go through. They've, they've gone through enough. We, don't, we want to spare them from having to go through a lengthy trial. And uh, by getting those pieces of the social media, we come that much closer to an absolute lock case um, that, that nobody can wiggle the way out of. I, I, I can tell you that some of the social media posts help build a case for first degree murder instead of second degree murder. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. You reported about five weeks ago, Sheriff Sanchez had been arrested on that charge. He was released, whether it was on bond or released by, uh, he bonded out, he bonded out. Did anyone see his, uh, did anyone uh, get the $15,000 reward or this is strictly investigative? So that will be up to crime stoppers to determine that. Um, I know that we did receive uh, some tips, I think, through crime stoppers. Uh, so the Crime Stoppers will handle that. I don't know the answer to that. Do you know what you saw when you started the interview process? Because from the media posts, it looks like they had a lot of guns and they were hours of guns. Do you want to answer that? Um, sure. Um, we recovered a weapon from, uh, from a related crime, I can say that. Um, as far as the rest of it, uh, this is evidence in obviously ongoing investigations. I just saw Michael Rodriguez and Detective Crosby just walk in right now actively still investigating these cases. So even though we've made some arrests and some great progress, there's still a lot of work to do. So I, I'd rather not answer that. I'd like to. Uh, what I will tell you is that every gun that they have that they decide to post and show, we'll do our best to get them because they don't, they don't deserve them and they can't legally have them. So with that, thank you very much for coming. And again, to the family, thank you for being here. And I hope today starts your work justice for your loved ones. Thank you.